Welcome back to the FF Dynasty's quarterback discussion <laughs> podcast. This is the only time this will happen all year long. Extraordinaire. So these guys are like, you why can either are they like it or love it, QBs. or hate it. Um, but welcome back. You can catch us at on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. Let's keep this thing right on a rolling down the river, just like Aretha. <laughs> Rolling, rolling. That means something different now, right? Uh, I don't know. The kids these days. <laughs> Pretty All sure right. that's what it meant. <laughs> Pretty sure that's what it meant when the song came out. Uh, Somebody gonna ask me who I'm picking or what? We don't care who you're picking. <laughs> Are we still doing this draft? <laughs> that's what everyone <laughs> listening is saying. Jeez. Like, At two eleven, picking for Jay's team. Oh, this, this is my two, first uh, pick. This, this is two ten. No, this is two eleven. Two eleven. You right? Two eleven. Right. Yeah, because right, I finished second. Right. To last. If you ain't first, you're last. Damn it. Yep. All right. Well, the first loser. The cop out pick here, what for Jay Wayne's team, just to pick as accurately as possible, True. Yeah. would yeah. have yeah. been Deion Kane. Kane. Because he's a Clemson guy and Deion Kane went to Clemson. Go mm-hmm. Tigers. And I'm going to take Deion Kane here, but not because Jason went to Clemson and he likes Clemson. I know that is probably, if he's around, will be the guy that he takes because there's not much chance of. A because Clemson he, guy getting past. He it. listens to this podcast. Yeah, I mean, I do need a quarterback. Possibly, all I have has been Noogie Burger. Well, sure. And I thought about maybe possibly taking Josh Rosen because he's a quarterback that I feel comfortable with being around in the league for the next you know five to ten years. I think I think he's going to be challenged and and challenge his guys and and I like everything he does. Um, I like his middle of the field kind of presence Poison and the strikes. pocket, man. He yeah. just steps up so smoothly and, and lets that thing come around him and he's not pre- he's not pressured. So I wouldn't have had a trouble, you know, hitting up Rosen here because you do only have one quarterback and you could kind of let him develop and Ben Roethlisberger's been up and down and all around whether or not he wants to play plus his health hasn't been great and Mason Rudolph comes around and now he says, well, I want to stick around, but you never yeah. know. Um, but Big Ben has been nasty on the stat sheet. Sure, right. when he's oh, in absolutely. there. But I've had that, that last half of the season, those last six or eight games, he was torching it. Yeah, I mean, he's got awesome upside, but I'm pretty sure I've had to have a back- backup quarterback every year in this league because he doesn't play 16 games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he's got to take one off. Bummer. Anyway, so I went with Deion Kane here over the quarterback, even though you needed one. There's really no running backs to speak of. You didn't need anybody on your team. There was no uh, handcuffs right. available for any of those guys to go ahead and reach for at this point. Um, you do have some good receivers. You have Keenan Allen. You have Amari Cooper. You have Corey Davis, who mm. I absolutely love. And you got your boy Sammy Watkins because he's on Clemson. And then you have the other Clemson guy from last Mike year. Williams. You have Mike Williams down there. So the obviously boys. this would have been a no-brainer. To and take. he's got Allen Robinson, so he's stacked it. Wide right. receiver. He's got plenty of receivers, so he doesn't need Deion Kane to come in here and do anything. But right. as the next best talent on the board, for me personally, I had him evaluated higher than Traquan Smith. I, I had him higher evaluated than... Um, Dante Pettis. I, sure. I thought I think yep. this guy is a really athletic, good ball player. It's just if the off the field stuff, right. if he can actually come to camp and he's got some bagage. Get in the playbook <laughs> and really be involved and into what's going on and not just be out there being a clown and not trying his hardest and right. not being involved and in this playbook, then I think there's a chance that he could be a starting receiver for this team. And like really at the end of the day, who do they have out there? I mean, I know they picked Darice Fountain in front of them, um, but I can't Deion Kane to me is just play. a better player upside. than Fountain. Fountain is is a is a long armed uh touchdown scorer from northern uh Iowa. Iowa. You can watch their games. They're playing the Western Illinois Roughnecks. It's really right? like, tough to watch those games, it too. And it's he, like not he, good camera work. He plays well and he scores touchdowns, Fountain, that is. But Deion Kane played at Clemson when he had a good quarterback. He was awesome. Obviously, Mike Williams was on the other side of him and the, the offense was humming. But Deion Kane has a, a lot of upside. There's a home run cut here. And it's really just T.Y. Hilton over in, in Colts Land that has a spot locked down on this roster. Right. And I think with his athletic ability, he could easily be on the field week one or by week three catching balls from Andrew Luck. Because at the end of the day, when you're saying, I could even argue personally by taking Deion Kane over Traquan Smith. Traquan Smith may play, like I said, zero years of being a starter on that team with Drew Brees. Right. At the very least, Deion Kane's going to play four years with Andrew Luck unless for some reason he does something stupid and gets cut or Andrew Luck is really not going to make it much longer in the NFL, which I don't believe. Yeah. So you just got one of the best quarterbacks in the league for years to come. He's a 
smart quarterback, mobile quarterback, winning quarterback, and when he's out there, there's balls to be caught. So, right. And we and, and Casey and I kind of got into this about Deion Kane because we're in another league together where we were talking about getting him in a draft. And like, I'm excited about what Ryan Grant can do in that offense. I'm excited. I, you know, if if the capital I F if the quarterback's throwing footballs, that's that's what you're excited about for the Colts right. to begin with. So, but but like Deion Kane doesn't really have to beat out a, a Chester Rogers. You know, like right. T. Y. Hilton. There's no beating him out. Ryan Grant isn't established, but I'm excited about what he's going to do. But they're going to put more than two wide receivers on the field. Yeah. And Deion Kane doesn't really have to beat anybody out. Obviously, they got Fountain and you got Chester Rogers, but it's pretty much wide open, is right. what Casey's saying there. And if Luck's out there throwing it around and he continues to improve and he's out there playing NFL right. football, then the upside play for Deion Kane is what I think. That's why I really like this pick a lot because the downside is. Andrew Luck doesn't play. The downside is that Doris Fountain's actually a good football player, and you know, or all that. maybe maybe they're both good. Yeah, and these, this is the starting lineup then for the Colts. Right, right. So the downside is Chester I, Rogers has been perennially beat out for as a starting job. True, and I like Ryan Grant as much as the next guy, but he's beat outable. And and the thing about the Chester Rogers <laughs> play is that you can see that in the first two weeks, or maybe even figure it out in the play in, in the preseason. If he if he's out there lighting it up, you just go pick him up off of waivers. Yeah. You're not losing anything by Chester Rogers being right. good. You got what two ten here? What two eleven? Two eleven that you're throwing at Deion Kane, and and I don't on this think... particular roster, you don't even need a, a receiver exactly. to do anything for you, right? And it's not like you're drafting somebody who you need to try to rely on. That maybe I might need to start this guy at some point. Exactly, you can just kind of throw him down there, and I, you know, I, talent wise, I think he's my favorite receiver, probably on the, on the board, board and, and more so than Traquan. I mean, other Antonio Callaway could be really awesome, but he's got plenty of problems over there. And, and he's got the depth chart in front of him. Right, but maybe and a depth he's got maybe maybe talent wise Antonio Callaway for sure. But but Deion between, Kane is was a is a five star recruit in his own right. Deion yeah. Kane is a, is a, is a stud player, a stud athlete. A real, you know, and he played football. It's mentally year. where you see Deion Kane not being where he needs to be, in right. my opinion. Yeah. Um. And yeah, then you know that, that's the whole thing is the is the is it between the ears because he's like you said the ultimate home run cut but is it all between the ears he he was suspended for attitude issues yeah he got popped for marijuana uh, he almost trans transferred from clemson his mom made him stick it out we kind of talked about all this back when we broke him down before the the draft or i guess we did that no, it was after the combine before the draft um you see a bunch of bad concentration drops that he's got to clean up but like that's just all behind behind the between the ears right and his good is really freaking good. Like he's a one Man, he's day, freaking good. One play day, one play. Your day is made with this cat, and you know I love that. He's got some some subtleties and some nuances to his route running. He's he can stack the defender. He's a great ball tracker. He's always just separating late in his route. He just pulls away at the very end with those. Yeah, I, I don't even know how he does. He's got it. good speed. Four four three guy. And the 6.713 cone drill, so he covers your metrics on that point. You see that show up on the field. The first two steps off the line of scrimmage are phenomenal. And he's a versatile guy. He can line up anywhere. He plays right. over the slot. He'll go over the middle. He doesn't care. He'll catch a ball in traffic. He just he could do everything for this team. It's just a matter of whether or not, like you yeah. let off with, can he get in this playbook and do it and learn it and, and be disciplined right. to be an NFL player? And he's so, got all the package. He's got the whole package. After we wrap up this, we're going to talk about some other guys that we like drafting uh, later on in rounds. And we'll, t we'll touch on some of the guys that you possibly could have drafted here, like a Callaway or maybe like a Justin Watson with a lot of upside. Yeah. Um, and kind of get the same deal. But I like Deion Kane the most out of those guys. Like I said, there's no, um, there's no running back on his team that's, that needs that, a handcuff. That needs the handcuff. Maybe if you have David Johnson, or maybe if the next guy has Todd Gurley, maybe you go up and grab one of those studs, or Zeke Elliott uh, backups. And yeah, maybe, well, Bo Scarborough might be a little bit of a reach in this area, but yeah, you know, I I don't. If you had Melvin Gordon, even taking Justin Jackson here, I couldn't argue with you too too much. Yeah. Like, uh, but there there is there isn't a case to be made for that. So I just took kind of the best player available. You could have maybe worked in a tight end here, but we'll we'll touch on some of those guys in a minute. Sure. All right, well let's uh let's move along. 